here. I was supposed to have retired July 31st. Uh, well, I'm a substitute teacher tonight. Uh, Julie Bowman, our new uh, program specialist for continuing education. Son is a senior at Newman, and this is their last away game in the football team, and they hope to win it. And Julie wanted to be there for her son. And since I had already agreed to come to the dinner, I said, I'd be more than happy to substitute for her tonight. I think I know this crowd, many of you, and, and I know the drill. So, uh, so I'm very happy to be back, and next time, maybe I'll be sitting out there with you uh, for the international dinner. Uh, but for tonight, because I was involved with getting Jeff and Ann uh, to do this dinner, I'm very happy to be able to introduce them. I've known Jeff Miller for a long time because when I first started on this job, 19 and a half years ago, Jeff taught college for kids for me. Uh, and he was a teacher in the Wausau School District and students loved his classroom. Uh, he would create these whole environments of a classroom that just made children want to learn. Um, and uh, so I've been following him for some time, and when I heard uh, through one of you that they'd been in Bangladesh and you'd suggested that I go after him uh, for an international <laughs> dinner, of course I did. I mean, that's what I've been doing for years. You all give me ideas of who would be a great speaker, who's been someplace really interesting or had a very interesting experience, and that's what the international dinners are about. They're to help inform us about other parts of the world on a people-to-people -people basis. Um, not a travelogue, but what was it really like to live there or to experience being there? And that's what Jeff and Ann have done in spades because they weren't just visiting, they were working there for, and they were there for three years. Uh, so a lot of experience that they've had in Bangladesh, which is a country of many contrasts, although it has been uh, dominated by Hindu and the Buddhist face, 96% of it is Muslim. So already you've got a lot of diversity right there. There's the influence of India in the food, which you'll be sampling tonight with the dinner, but there's all kinds of other contrasts. And rather than my telling you about them or reading from the sheet here, that if you didn't pick up and you want the information on here, I'm going to let Ann and Jeff Miller tell you about their time in Bangladesh. So we welcome Ann and Jeff. Thank you. Thank you, Vicki, for that uh, very nice introduction. And, and thanks, everybody, for coming. Uh, uh, if, if we seem a little nervous, it's because we are. Um, <laughs> I, I wanted, we wanted to start by saying uh, the, the traditional Bangladeshi greeting. So we'll say, assalamu alaikum. <laughs> um, so I, I, you know, Vicki said we are uh, Ann and Jeff Miller. I, I taught for many years in the Wasa School District as a fifth grade teacher. Uh, and uh, you know, uh, Anne was a kindergarten mm -hmm. teacher. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so anyway, we taught, and, and we were very comfortable, and we decided um, we needed to do something different. We were Peace Corps volunteers back in the late 80s. We enjoyed that international experience immensely. It changed who we are as people. So we taught and decided we needed a change, so we decided to leave everything comfortable for us, our home, our kids, our jobs. Um, <laughs> and just go somewhere that was very different. And we chose Bangladesh because we were very, in, we've always been very interested in India. And, and we wanted, we actually were thinking we would try to go to India. And then this opportunity came, uh, we, at, the, at the recruitment fair, we met the uh, superintendent and principal and we just really connected with them and they had a really nice package and we knew it was close to India so we thought, let's, let's go for it. And we really didn't know anything about Bangladesh. We literally had to look where it was on the map exactly. We knew it was sort of in that region. Um, so anyway, that's, that's how this all began. And you know, I guess as, as we, we, we thought about what we'd like you to take away from tonight, and uh, you know, we, uh, I guess what we'd like to see you leave with is just a, a feeling that you know, Bangladesh is a wonderful place. It's a special place in our hearts. Uh, wonderful, wonderful people. Um, you know, I, I, it was a challenging place to live for two people from Wausau, Wisconsin, uh, but, but really uh, a wonderful place overall. And I hope that when you leave, you've got that sense of what, a, what an interesting and, and wonderful place it is. And so different, so, so different than Wausau. 
<laughs> right? And, and I guess, you know, uh, we're, we're, everything that we say is, is from our perspective. And I mean, we, we've we lived there for three years. We're certainly not experts on everything about Bangladesh, but, but it's from our perspective. And that's what we hope to share with you tonight. Um, we'll, we'll have you save questions for the end, and we'll have some time for any questions uh, as, we, as we finish up, OK? So um, we've kind of done our introductions that uh, uh, we have to kind of uh, just, just tell you about some, some special people that really kind of helped ease us into to Bangladesh. Rezwan and Lopa, uh, <laughs> Mohammed are, are, are some friends of ours that we met. Uh, we, someone introduced us to them before we went to Bangladesh, uh, and they invited us over, and we had dinner, and they, they kind of helped us, uh, you know, introduce us to Bangladesh, and to the, really to the hospitality of the Bangladeshi people. The first thing I remember Lopa saying to me is, why are you going there? <laughs> <laughs> and, and, and they were best friends, very lovely, wonderful dinner we had together, and welcomed us, and we found we had many connections. And then it just so happened that when we got to, to Dhaka, in this crazy transition, they happened to be there. And so it was one of the biggest holidays, their Eid celebration, and they had us over with their family that first week. And I honestly, from the bottom of my heart, have to say that was one of our highlights of the three years we were there. So that's our WhatsApp Bangladesh connection. And there they, here they are. And so, so this is Ann and Jeff, you know, like on day three in Bangladesh, uh, you know, with their family. Um, and, you know, so we're kind of wide-eyed, not sure what we've gotten into, you know, and, and uh, but it, anyway, it was wonderful. really nice to connect with them both here before we left and then uh, when we got there. Okay. I think he does this. Okay. Oh, uh, while we're, um, we have Chris in the back and we're, there might be, we're, we're trying to kind of make this uh, work. Uh, and we'll just see how things are synced with our helper in the back. We, we like every day started with the call to prayer. So this is what, we, our, this was the backdrop for much of our, our time there. Four times Five times a day. And, and when we got there the first day, I, I have to plead ignorance. I didn't, I knew we were coming, going to a Muslim country, but I didn't really know and understand how we were, we were resting because we had a 24 four hour flight or 24 hour travel, not flight. It happened to be right across the street from a mosque with a speaker facing our apartment. And I probably jumped three feet. And I just, I was like, oh my God, what is, what's, what is that? You know, and anyway. And I said, uh, I, I don't think we're in Kansas any longer. <laughs> <laughs> and, and, and it was really, a, 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 it's so different there. It was our first uh, realization that we really were in a, in a different place. So, you know, I, I just wanted to make sure that we, you know, you had a sense of where Bangladesh is. For those of you who might not be aware, uh, it borders India, and I best map, but uh, so it's, it uh, is uh, sandwiched between India and a small part of Burma or Myanmar um, on the Bay of Bengal. Uh, there are three major rivers that come together just south of the capital city of Dhaka. And it's, the latitude is, is roughly that of the state of Florida. I know Dhaka is about Miami Beach. Um, and uh, so it's, it's hot and humid most of the year, uh, with a dry season for the, the months of um, uh, November, December, January. Um, and uh, it, during those months, it gets a little cooler. But otherwise, it's pretty warm and, and uh, muggy there. Uh, we wanted to share a few facts with you about Bangladesh. Um, uh, the capital is Dhaka. Uh, the land area is 56,977 square miles, so roughly or approximately the size of the state of Iowa. But the population is approximately 170 million, uh, making it the eighth largest country in the world by population. Um, the, uh, the, the land area of Dhaka is about 125 square miles, um, and, and it's 15 million people. Uh, people makes it one of the fastest growing of the so-called uh, mega cities. Okay, um, um, the, the uh, it has one of the highest population densities in the world. Um, nationwide, the the uh, people per square mile is 3,241, and in Dhaka, it's about 115,000 people per square mile, which is is way up there. You know, above is, it is the the uh, highest population density in the world. Oh, and I just put Wisconsin in there just so you could kind of see how it compares. You know, okay. So this is just 
an, a small example of. This is an area of, of the area that we lived. Yeah. Um, I found this on, uh, on the internet, uh, on YouTube, and it's, it's, uh, two, it shows kind of uh, traffic in two places that we spent a lot of time. One is only about a quarter mile from our, our place. Um, I'm going to just run up and talk to you. Um, yes? So this was probably a Friday, and a Friday is uh, the day of prayer, and the streets move. The traffic actually moves. Um, it is unusual. It's very, uh, the traffic is unexplainable. You have to feel it and see it to really understand. Right, Lynn? <laughs> but I, what, what we loved about this is this, this is so close to where we lived, and it just gives such a good uh, perspective on the things that we saw on a daily basis. The, you know, the colors, the, the, the feast for the eyes. There was so much to see. Uh, it was so interesting. The U.S. Embassy is right in the back there. You can, you can kind of see a building in the back. And our apartment is right up on the left, about maybe, uh, maybe not even a quarter mile, a few, mile, a few blocks down the street there. Um, one of the things that, one, one story that we wanted to tell you is, it, just to give you a kind of a, a sense of, of um, uh, I don't even, th this, we were driving along this road. We had, a, we had a driver, a guy named Ulash, who drove us around and uh, the same direction that this bus was going. And in order to go the other direction, there was no way to just turn onto the road going that direction. So we had to go down this way uh, and make a U-turn at an opening in the road. And uh, as we were driving down this road, all of a sudden we heard this loud crash. And, you know, we were, we were startled, we, we, were, we were scared. Um, and as we came around the, the, the turn, straight ahead, there was a bus that had flipped over on its side. And, and, they're, uh, and they're packed. And they're packed. And people were running. You know, as, as soon as this happened, people were running to that bus to see if they could help out. And our driver, worried for our safety, uh, just kind of buzzed by it. And we were, we were kind of thinking, geez, should we stop and help? And he just buzzed us through there. And we started asking him some questions about this bus. You know, I said, all right, will, will an ambulance come? You know, and he said, no, sir, no, sir, no ambulance. Will, a, will the fire truck come? Well, no, sir, there's no, no fire trucks. Uh, police, and he said, no, there's, there's no police to come and help. So the people are, are the ones that are helping with this situation. Um, and then, you know, we see another bus that's, that's kind of stopped, and there's, a, uh, you know, there's two gentlemen, well, I shouldn't say gentlemen, two people running down the road chasing another man with, uh, with farm implements. And we asked our driver, well, what, what, what are these people doing? And they were chasing down the bus driver of the other bus that, that, caused the, that they thought caused the accident. Because there isn't a, a justice yeah, I mean, it was system a, in place. It's very, the infrastructure is and that was, that was, weak. Yeah, it was, it was, that was a very sort of a sad, sad story. But it was also wonderful to see all those people making their way to that bus trying to so lift, quickly, trying, yeah, trying to get the people out. And so it was, a, it was you know, I think that was one of those things that was a, a great contrast. The rickshaws that you saw there is, is a very common way to get around. Uh, we took them. We had a driver and we had a car, but it was kind of fun because it was open air and um, they didn't always, the school didn't always want us to do that. But of course, you're so much a part of the culture and the environment when you're in a rickshaw and it's very uh, enjoyable, actually. Mm -hmm. okay. It's a great way to get around. Wish we could bring one back to Wausau. You know? Um, the, the, the country of Bangladesh is just a very, very colorful place. And this is just, we just kind of threw this in there as a kind of a montage. Um, the, the picture up in the upper right hand corner is uh, during our first week, we were taking field trips with other teachers during our um, uh, in-service week. And we ended up just uh, at the parliament building with, and all these children just kind of gathered around us. We were, you know, there, there's not a lot of um, expats in Bangladesh. And so we were, you know, we were kind of, uh, you know, people did look at us and, and, you know, they were surprised to see us. And uh, so we just had, that was a great photo op. 
So uh, this is the school that we lived in, or I'm sorry, that we worked at. Um, very different than a, a school you'll see in a little while that we, that we volunteered at. Um, but we, we were at an American International School in Dhaka. And when you went through the gates to the compound, it literally was, you walked through those gates and you felt like you were in America. Now, the school, we'll, you'll see some pictures of the students and the kids, was very diverse and there were kids from all over the world there. But the curriculum was an American curriculum and the school had American sports and, you know, so it was, uh, it, it literally you had to cover up completely all basically all skin and then you walk through the door and you could take your coat off and, and anything you know anything American was accepted when you were on the grounds of the school. And this is the teachers lounge with three uh, massage chairs in the back. <laughs> One day a week they provided massage therapists for us so yeah we had to pay for them but it was a really reasonable we had to pay $3. <laughs> $3. <laughs> these were these were our uh, some of my favorite people just our helpers who helped um, in, in my classroom and they're just lovely they're, they're called bearers, and they're sort of like janitors. Oh, sorry, 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 sorry. They're like janitors who come and um, we became very close with them, just lovely ladies. And this is my class. I had a, a fourth grade class, and uh, you know, just, just wanted you to see kind of what a classroom looked like uh, over there. This is our, our brand new theater that we have, um, and we had a rooftop playground with tennis courts and a soccer pitch, and. Uh, so it was a very, you know, the school had really had nice facilities. It was an amazing place to work. This is my group. Our son Ben is in the corner. Um, he came the second year with us, and he ended up being a teacher assistant in the preschool. And that, that picture is dress up like your favorite teacher day. And Ben was truly a rock star in kindergarten, I mean in preschool. And he was a mu he's a musician, and so the little boys, and Ben has... Unfortunately, he has these big earrings, and all the little boys came with Cheerios stuck to their ears, and uh, seriously, tattoos on their, it was so cute, so, and they adored him. So, um, yeah, that was, and this was, a, this was a UN Day, uh, United Nations Day, that the kids were all dressed up. These were just some of, the, um, uh, some of our colleagues, uh, lovely, colorful. This just shows the beautiful, I mean, every day they would come just looking amazing um, in beautiful colors and just, lovely people. And this is the front entryway of our school uh, where, you know, the pillars were, were painted in sort of uh, rickshaw paintings and uh, very, very colorful. Um, this is my class and I, it's actually a little video um, and I just, I wanted to just sort of share, um, share the diversity there. There's, you know, 14 students and they're from, you know, a Africa, Canada, Pakistan, uh, Sri Lanka, Korea, Japan, uh, Thailand, uh, Canada, America. Um, and so it was just, you know, so much fun to have such a diverse group of students and, and families, and they would bring in their cultures, and they knew their, they knew their globe as five-year-olds. They, they knew their flags. They knew their globe. Um, they've, they've been to, it, it just was an amazing group to teach. It really was. It was really delightful. This is kindergarten. kindergarten. Yes. Is he gonna? That's okay. We can skip that. That's okay. Oh, they had a cute little song, but that's okay. And it is very cute. It's not going forward. I wonder if it's stuck. You tell that. Okay, uh, so I was fortunate enough to go to a cricket match uh, between uh, uh, Bangladesh and uh, Zimbabwe, and uh, it was just you know it was really a, a just a, a such a neat uh, atmosphere and uh, you know just the you know the chanting the excitement the enthusiasm for cricket over there is is um, uh, it's very contagious. Uh, all the teachers on staff would wear their Bangladesh uh, you know uh, shirts on the the days that they that they played and it was very exciting. It was a school grounds. And, 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 and our neighborhood, too. This is mm -hmm. kind of where we live. This is the, the, the lower right-hand corner is our street. Um, they did some work on it, and it took a little while for them to complete. Uh, a long while, yes. <laughs> like more than a year. And we, always, we were always fascinated by the way that they, they, build, they constructed the buildings, uh, these high-rises with uh, bamboo 
and really with, uh, with manual labor. You know, no cranes or anything. It was amazing. Very, very interesting. Uh, incredible energy amongst the people. That was out our bedroom window in the sunset. Basically. And, and we, had, we had some parrots, par parrots um, nesting right next door. So we did see some birds and a little bit of green, but we did miss our nature when we were there. So I, uh, you know, we, we walked the same roads to, uh, to school every day, and there were some people that were like our regular, the people we'd pass every day, and I would use that greeting, that traditional greeting, assalamu alaikum, uh, with them, and I didn't speak a lot of Bangla. I could, I could say a few things, um, but this was an old tea seller who didn't speak a word of English, and every day we would greet each other. Some days I would bring him a banana or, or some kind of treat that we had made at home, and uh, he, would, he would offer me tea, and he would offer me other cakes and things. And it, despite the fact that we really couldn't communicate, he was just a wonderful old guy that, that through you know, limited communication, we just had this daily Amazing relationship. relationship yeah. And there was another uh, guy who sold bananas, probably the worst bananas I've ever tasted. I don't know. I, he, he was clearly cognitively delayed or something, but he, he sold bananas near the school. And he was just a, he a, loved another Jeff. guy that we would see every day. And he would run up to us and you know give us bananas and and we you know some days he wouldn't take our money and other days we'd overpay him and you know, and then they kicked him um, out for a while because yeah. they were I don't know they were they were monkey problems at the school the monkeys would come and bother the kids and so they couldn't sell food outside so then we saw him downtown and thought we'd never see him again <laughs> and he saw Jeff and he just got teary and ran and hugged him and it was just very sweet. So, you know, okay, so we showed you the school that we worked at, and so now we'd like to share uh, some, some slides of the school that we volunteered at on weekends. Um, and this, this was, I think, you know, as much as we loved our school, this was a really humbling experience. Um, just, yeah. uh, you know, we, we learned so much. I, I, it was a school, the, the organization was called Thrive, and these three women, a year before we came, decided that they wanted to try to nourish the kids in some way in the slums to give them a little bit of nourishment so they would learn better. So they brought them a banana every day at 10 o'clock, and every kid got a banana. And then it, 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 we got, they got funding and sponsors, and then they, then they gave these schools, they would give them like a boiled egg and a handful of peanuts and a piece of fruit. And that continued, and then it expanded to like 11 schools. And we happened to sort of be there at the beginning of this vivid school. One room, you'll see some pictures. And they would come every day, and, and each child would open up their little container, and we'd give them peanuts and eggs and a banana. This is the, this is the classroom. I mean, anyway, it, it, it's, it's, it was an amazing, humbling experience. Every single time we went there, there's our son, Ben, and there's the school. Every single time we went there, we, we were a little apprehensive and a little nervous, but never, ever did, did anyone beg or did anybody. We, there's a lot of begging in Bangladesh on the streets, um, and, and never when we went in there. And we had to go. We went in and back and back and back. I mean, it was a journey just to get back to this school. And the little kids would see us coming, and they'd take our hands and just guide us back to the space where we needed to be. And, Every single week we went, and we would sing with them and bring stories and sometimes bring candy and bring healthy snacks and wash hands. And um, we didn't really do any great anything, but you know, we got a lot more out of it than we feel like we put into it, but um, we sure enjoyed it. And it was an amazing, humbling experience. They would sometimes invite us for special occasions, like this was an art contest, and we were invited to help judge and then to present the awards. And this young woman in the red is the founder. She, she's a young person who just has this spirit and passion, and she started this school. Um, there's our daughter, Sarah. She was there, and Ben, her husband, Hugus, is in the front. Um, and they also came with us, and um, at first they were apprehensive and weren't sure, and they fell in love with the kids in the school, too. Um, Stephanie DeWitts from South Mountain, um, her classroom and her school has raised money each year to help that, with this. And that's the school that I taught at for many years. Uh, Stephanie and I worked together, and it was really neat that she had, she had kind of, uh, we connected at, through, through the school, and she raised money for the Thrive program and for, uh, for Vivid School. Mm -hmm. And then you'll see later she came to visit so, us. So Vivid School is, is in the middle of this, this, uh, this large slum in Dhaka called the Korayal Slum. 
And we found this really good YouTube video. It's about a minute and 20 seconds or something. And it just kind of does a nice job of showing what it's like there. <laughs> Textiles are huge there. Those So these are some, just some of the pictures that we've taken of the, of the Korail slum uh, in our, our different trips there. Children were wonderful, just so happy uh, all, always. One of the things that, uh, you know, really uh, just amazed us about Korail too was going in there was, you know, um, there were beggars in parts of, of Dhaka, but, uh, you know, we would go into Korail where, where people really didn't have much at all. And, and I mean, maybe if, uh, uh, you could count on one hand the number of times people asked us for things. And all the times we went there, you know, they, they, were just, they were just so, I think, so pleased that we were there. And they didn't ask us for anything. They, you know, they helped us find the school that we were looking for. It, just, it was just a, a really amazing place. They love to feel the hair on our arms. You know? <laughs> <laughs> this is a back, the, everything, everything in Dhaka is colorful and they take pride in and their in, rickshaw owners have a beautiful painted rickshaws and we just thought this was a cool one so you know one of the things that's amazing is that the the, the slum was uh, like it was it was really like they everything was there there were little restaurants that everything was on a little smaller scale uh, but everything was there and there it were was, little pharmacies and little you know mm -hmm. but everything was small and the energy and the people and the just just bangladeshis in my opinion are very energetic they 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 are very work, they all want jobs they, they're, they're, nobody sits around everybody's always looking for work and it's a very amazing positive energy you always feel there. And you can see the boys playing cricket up there. So uh, one of our favorite places that we went, like during our training week, uh, during our in-service week, they took us down to Old Dhaka on Hindu Street. Um, and when our friends came to visit us at the, uh, at the, you know, during their spring vacation, we took them down to Old Dhaka. And it's just a very uh, vibrant, uh, you know, active place, uh, part of the city. Um, you know, the, the streets are very narrow, and so there's not a lot of traffic other than rickshaws and, and carts and things. And it's just a, kind of a fascinating part of the city. Occasionally you see an elephant down there. Uh, sandals and shoes. Oh. What's our eggplant? Uh, another place right by Old Dhaka that is, is fascinating is the waterfront, which they call the, the Shatragat. Um, and, uh, it's, it, you know, because of the big rivers there, the, the, the waterways are such an important uh, means of transporting both people and, and um, you know, trade goods and things. 
And so we, we had the good fortune of taking a couple of overnight boats that looked somewhat like that, not quite as crowded when we were on them, um, but it was a really fascinating place. Uh, very, again, very vibrant and... Um, the rivers and water are everywhere. I mean, that's the, the whole country is, you know, uh, revolves around water. You could kind of tell what season it was by what was kind of uh, in the water, as you'll see it in just a moment. I can't, I can't tell quite what that is. It looks like flowers or something, but um, again, very colorful. Uh, the, 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 the clothing that people wore and you can, I, I love this because you can see that the boy is just kind of like up front and he's, you know, and the women are kind of covering their mouths and their heads are covered and they're just sort of more shy than this guy up front. This was watermelon season, if you couldn't tell. And they were, they were all over the shore and floating in the water and... We were fortunate. We, we had our bikes there, our mountain bikes there. Um, and so we would try to get out almost every weekend. Um, but getting out was challenging. <laughs> we had to cross, like, what, six lanes of... Well, the road that you saw at the beginning, the traffic video, uh, we had to cross that road. And sometimes we'd try to go up and over that little bridge, but that was difficult. And sometimes we would just do like the frogger thing and go right through the, you know, the traffic and try to get to the other side. It was really taking your life in your hands every time. And I kept saying, I'm not doing it again. And then I would do it and we would, we would make it. Because when you got to the other side, it was amazing. The, village, the villages and the people were, were just incredibly, it's just different, just. And, and as we were, after a couple of years there, like the second year, we, we actually bought from someone who was leaving the country a, a bicycle rack. Yeah. And our, our driver uh, started to help us put our bikes on the car and everything. And we, he would drive us out just about a half hour. And from there, we could take a nice bike ride. And this is, this is that ride where we could cross some bridges. And there was actually some, some nice, almost like, I, I mean, paved, paved spaces that had no cars, but maybe had a, the occasional rickshaw. And, so often we'd have to put our bikes on boats just to get across to get to the other side. And there, there, isn't a, there was not a dull moment there, let me tell you that. It was, there was always something. <laughs> this was actually, this was near our house. I think Sarah and her friend were taking photos or something. But this, we, this is where we saw all the monkeys. They would come out and greet us. And sometimes they'd be right up on that wall there. So this is that kind of bike path that, I mean, it's not a bike path, but to us it, was, it seemed like a bike path, and it was a really nice ride. And, and they loved that we had the cricket, tr oh, yeah. cricket jerseys on. Oh, my gosh. We would go, and they'd say, Bangladesh, Bangladesh, you love Bangladesh, you know, so we would, you know. We knew if we course. wore those, we'd be celebrities in any village. Yeah. <laughs> so this is our driver, Ulash, and he was, he was just, uh, just a wonderful guy. He spoke no English. Um, basically, and he was so good to us, and we had this amazing respect for him, and he, he, I can't say enough, and, and we had no really ver verbal, verbal communication. No, but we always got to wherever we needed to go. I, somehow. And, and I would come down, we would have special events, and I would come down like in a sari, and he would just look at me like, thank you for, for honoring our country, or you know, he just, we just had this amazing relationship with him. He was just a, a wonderful person. And the whole three years, our, we had a cook um, who did our cooking and our laundry and our, I mean, and, and, and she invited us to her village right away. And we loved it. We went three times. And he, he did not. And we just kind of were hoping he would. So we would get to know his wife. And then one day he said, oh my, somehow he got out. My wife, she went by and I said, oh, we have to meet her. And then the next week he invited us for a holiday to his place, to his home. And he was shy and embarrassed because it was, you know, not really up to the conditions that we lived. But we had an amazing dinner with him and his family. And that's my favorite photograph. <laughs> I love that. <laughs> so this is uh, Bangladeshi New Year. Uh, there, they had, you know, a few, uh, some holidays that were big, you know, very important. And so this was Bangladeshi New Year. And we would always go to this one park. And so a lot of these photos are from this park. People just kind of dressed up on that holiday, and they would do, you know, there'd be special events in the park, and um, so we just ended up there, uh, I think, all three years. 
This was a coworker of ours, and we happened to see him in the park. And he, he designs these Punjabis. Uh, he designed the one that he's wearing. That was, uh, that was in, his, you know, in his, his day, or you know, in his night job or whatever. He was designing these Punjabis. That's the Bangladeshi flag. You should have brought that. So this, this was one of our favorite parks, and this is New Year's again. Um, but we loved to go to this park just because it was green and you could walk around. And so that was one of our favorite places to, to exercise. And it's very popular to get henna. All the holidays, everybody would get it on their hands and feet. And if, if for weddings, the girls would get it up their arms and on their hands. And some of these are just photos that we loved. This is a holiday. And uh, the, the one down on the bottom right, uh, the Eid celebration. During Eid, um, people, people slaughter goats and cows. And, and uh, you know, it's a, it's, a, it's a holiday where that's a very important part of it at the end, uh, breaking the, the, the fast. And, mm -hmm. um, and so this is actually a picture that we, the, the last year we were there, we were actually in Dhaka for that celebration. And so we walked around our, our neighborhood and they were butchering cows. You can kind of see that in the back. But there are places where the roads were literally, you know, running red. And they give one third, correct me if I'm, one third to the poor, one third to, they keep one third and one third to their family. I can't remember the, 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 that exact fact. But, and, they, and they honored this, and they had a ceremony for the animal. It was kind of a neat ceremony. And so here, this is right outside the wall of the school. This is supposed to be for just school buses, but during Eid, that's, that's, <laughs> it's okay to have your cows there. <laughs> and this, is, yeah, this was the first, the first week that we were there. We took a boat ride, and um, I, I'm not sure, that, but people are just out in force, and this was a bridge that we went under on our boat, and there were just people lining up along the bridge, uh, just kind of celebrating. It was, it was kind mm -hmm. of neat during that mm -hmm. first week to see that. And that kind of leads us into some of the smaller rivers. You know, the, the Shatergat that we saw earlier is the big waterway where people take, uh, you know, large transportation. We were fortunate enough to get some, some rides on some smaller boats uh, with, with other people uh, and families who had boats. And uh, it was just a really neat to kind of uh, be out there during different seasons and to see the importance of the, of the waterways and how they change from the dry season to the mm -hmm. rainy season. And, and we saw a lot of amazing birds and dolphins, pink dolphins one time. That's kind of cool. Just uh, the, often they were moving sand, trying to fill in uh, land that they wanted to develop. So there was always a uh, movement of sand. Uh, it, was, it was just amazing, all um, with manual labor. And lots of fishing, uh, really cool nets that uh, they, would, they would stand on to lift them up. You'd step on it, and the net would come up out of the water. Um, very neat engineering. And so uh, we, were, we were very fortunate to get to, to take some trips to different parts of, uh, of Bangladesh. Uh, so the next part of the time we were there, the, there were some political issues. So there was so we were restrained to just Dhaka. So any time they would lift that, we would like get in the car and, and go somewhere, or not get in the car. You don't really get in the car. You take a boat somewhere, or you hire a driver. So we were able to to visit a few places mm -hmm. while we were there. And a teacher at our school, or a, a, one of the teacher assistants at our school, uh, invited us to go down to the island of Bola, where the arrow is pointing. And we took an overnight boat uh, down through the rivers and uh, you know, spent a couple nights with her family down there in Bola. And it was really a neat experience. Mm -hmm. So this is the overnight boat where they, they uh, fed us very nicely. It was a beautiful place. It was really nice to be in fresh air and get a, t a little nature. And um, the, 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 the woman who brought us down there, her, her family was involved in this madrasa, you know, a, a, an Islamic school. And uh, so they brought us there. And it was just, they, they welcomed us with open oh, arms. Yeah. And, it was, and it, was, it was such a neat experience. Mm -hmm. uh, wonderful, beautiful children. Uh, it was, uh, yeah, yeah it, it was indescribable. We were asked to give the young women some, um, what, what advice would you give them or what wisdom would you want to give them? And it was very emotional to do that. And they, they were real receptive to it. It was, it was neat. 
Uh, another place that we, we went to, uh, we, we chose the wrong weekend to go to a place called Cox's Bazaar. Um, we, you know, we were busy during the week and, and uh, didn't really look at the weather report. And when we got there, shortly after we arrived, we found out that there was a cyclone heading straight for us. Uh, <laughs> so we had to be evacuated. Like, we, I think we stayed, did we even stay one night? When, we did stay, we stay one, one night. night. And then we had to move to a different hotel in the city that was much stronger. And we were, we were like in a, like a little beach hut, uh, you know, with the storm bearing down, so. Like Florida today. This was the, the beginning of the storm. Yeah, and, and the sort of before the storm. I guess you'd call that the calm before the storm. Yeah. <laughs> this is during the storm uh, from our hotel room, that, the, the, the one that we moved to. It's supposed to be gorgeous. It, the biggest beach in the world, right? Yeah, longest yeah. beach longest in the world. Longest beach in the world. Um, so another place that we, we took a night boat during our last, just last spring, uh, a place we really wanted to see before we left was called, uh, is a, um, a huge, um, what's it called? Uh, uh, ah. <laughs> well, it's a huge, it's a, uh, a very famous uh, 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 flooded forest, basically. Um, and it's one of the largest in the world. And it still has wild tigers. Um, uh, it's got, you know, all kinds of dolphins, crocodiles, wild crocodiles. Um, so we wanted to see that. So uh, that's called the Shunderbans. It goes into India. So these are just a, a couple of slides of things that we saw while we were down there. Um, if you look carefully up in the upper right, that we did actually see some tiger tracks. We did not, we were not fortunate enough to see the tiger, but we saw the tracks. Some would say maybe we were lucky. <laughs> and while we were down there, we, part of the trip was also to, to visit some different, we went to a, a very uh, old mosque. Uh, and it was just, uh, we just, you know, one of the things that was so neat about Bangladesh was the artwork that was sort everywhere. of everywhere, mm -hmm. everywhere you went. Uh, one of our favorite trips was up to the north uh, to a place called Silet and Sri Mangal. We actually went up there twice. Uh, we, we took a train up there one time, or a bus up there and then a train back. Mm -hmm. That was a very interesting experience. Um, it was nice to have both the, the bus ride and the train ride to experience both of those. Um, but we, there was a national park up there that we really wanted to see, and that's really what we... Uh, so we went to Lawachara National Park and it was just beautiful. We got to, we got to hike through the forest, uh, saw some uh, very rare gibbons up there. We chased them. Yeah. Uh, we kept hearing them, and we kept chasing them, and it was hot. And uh, f finally, finally, we heard our, our guide said, oh, I think we're near, I think we're near. And all, and all of a sudden, we sort of, it felt like it was kind of raining. Well, they were peeing on us. The, the, <laughs> they were at the top of the canopy, and they were peeing on us to scare us away. And so then they did scare us away. <laughs> the spiders were large there. there leeches, were, terrestrial yeah, leeches. Ter yeah, ground leeches. So, you know, you'd walk through the forest and you could see them uh, in the leaf litter just kind of like, you know, They would weave <laughs> right through something. your shoes or your boots and they'd latch on. It didn't hurt. Uh, I didn't really like them. Um, I got used to them, though. I, the, you know, we were, we were Peace Corps volunteers back 20 years ago, and I really didn't like them then, and I got used to them here, because you can't, if you, 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 you don't go hiking if you can't handle leeches, and I wanted to hike, so we did. So up there in that part of uh, Bangladesh, it's the tea, the tea garden area, and so they grow lots of tea, and uh, so our second trip up there, we, we stayed in a, a tea house, and uh, with, with uh, full house, actually, uh, like mm -hmm. 20 people or something, including our friends uh, who came to visit us uh, last spring. So these are tea, tea plants. It was beautiful up there. I mean, it, you know, compared to Wisconsin, maybe it was so different, but it was just so good to get out of the city and go up to this beautiful area. Everything, even the trucks, are painted gorgeous. They're very into, um, very proud of their, um, their jobs and their transport vehicles. When we rode the train, we rode inside. Uh, <laughs> but, uh, you know, the trains, you know, I would, I would, I would recommend that you, uh, you Google, uh, like, DACA trains. 
During Eid, when people are traveling for the holidays, you know, there's just not enough transportation for everyone to get back to their villages. And so the trains are, are just, uh, there's a really, some really interesting YouTube videos that really show these trains really crowded uh, with people all over them. And we did experience that in Sri Lanka, not in Dhaka. Yeah. Yeah. So uh, <laughs> I, I, we, I wanted to try what it, you know, experience what it was like to be a rickshaw driver. And so uh, this was like one of our favorite stories while we were there. Uh, there was a rickshaw driver, and he spoke a little bit of English. And I happened to have my bicycle, but um, you know, Ann and, and our daughter Sarah and our friend uh, did not have their bicycles. They needed a rickshaw. And so I, I actually just talked to the rickshaw driver and I said, hey, would you ride my bicycle and I'll ride the rickshaw? And you know, he was like, sure, that, that's fine. You know, and, and so we switched. And I drove probably maybe a couple kilometers from one venue for the, the celebration to the other. And uh, uh, you know, I think one of the reasons we love this story is it just shows the, sort of the generosity of the ba uh, Bangladeshi people. So when, when we got there, uh, you know, I got off the rickshaw and I was dead. I'm, I'm like driving these three women around, and, and the other rickshaws are flying by me. And some of them have three people in them. And I'm like, and they're laughing at me. And they're I'm, tiny people. That guys weigh 80 pounds or something. Yeah, and I mean, they're I'm, tiny. I'm wearing a Punjabi, riding the rickshaw. And, uh, you know, it was just hysterical. People were all looking at us, and it was really fun. They were laughing, and they were like, good but job. So, so we get there, and, um, you know, I get off. And I, I give him probably twice what we'd normally give a rickshaw driver because he's given me this experience. And he's like, no, no, you shouldn't be paying me. You know, you, the you drove the rickshaw. And I'm like, no, 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 but you gave me the experience. And so I, I gave him the 200 taka, which is, you know, like about... Uh, $3 or two, something. Yeah, 250 or something. And uh, he, you know, we said, you know, we just kept talking to him and he said... We, we said, you wait. We went inside to a festival. Yeah, and he said, festival. we said, well, you watch our bikes. You stay here. We'll give you another rickshaw. We'll, you know, you can take them home after this. And then I'll ride the bicycle. And uh, so he said he would watch our bikes. And so we, we came back out, and he comes up to me, and he, and he says, here, hold out your hand. And I, I put my, uh, my hand out, and he ties a, a bracelet around my wrist that he bought, bought for me with the two, you know, the 200 taka. You know, yeah. I mean, so he didn't want to take our money, even though he had provided us this, this experience. Mm -hmm. And that really sums up the people yeah. of Bangladesh. They are so giving, and, and even those that don't have much. They were amazing in their generosity. So this is our last connection to DACA. <laughs> Lynn Weiss was here, and <laughs> Stephanie DeWitz. They came to visit us the last like a month before we left. And they were there um, about 10 days. And uh, we think we provided them a pretty good experience. Um, and anyway, so that's our, our connection back to Wasa. Uh, it was really lovely to have them. And they were, they were, they were such good sports about everything. Yep. It's, yes, they were. From so. the 10-hour car ride we took them on as soon as they got off the airplane. <laughs> and that was a, a, quite a car ride. A lot of bouncing. Anyway, so that's, that's, that's our, our slide presentation. If anybody... Questions? So, if, there, if anyone has any questions, like, you know, like I said before, uh, we'll, we'll give you our perspective. Um, you know, we may not be, be able to answer all your questions, but we'd be happy to try. And we have a microphone here, and we'd like you to use the microphone for your question so everyone can hear. So Ruth, you get it first. Try not to make them too hard. <laughs> Something about the literacy. Now, you were volunteering in a school. If you wouldn't have been there, you know, our, is education provided for people that can't afford the something else? There, there is, a, uh, there is some, somewhat of a public education system, but not everybody receives it. Um, and in the, like in the slum where we, where we volunteered, they, um, they, were, they were trying to get as many kids into schools as they could, and the kids really wanted to go. Those kids that were there were kind of the lucky kids. Um, when, while we were there, they had started out with like kids that were, I think, fifth and sixth grade. Um, and they were, they were the only kids that were going to school. And while we were there, they, they added like a second section where the, where the smaller kids came in the morning and the older kids came in the afternoon. And they hired a couple different teachers. But they were, um, when they were raising money at South Mountain uh, last year, they were actually looking, to, we, we were trying to raise money to try to help um, them build a new school so they had more space. Um, but there are many of these schools popping up and, and a lot of NGOs are trying to get 
all kids a place to go to school. But because of the population and the sheer numbers in this slum area, it's really, really difficult to account for all the kids. And, and, but, but they're working hard at it, working hard at trying to well, make that happen. And you, you mentioned like the literacy rate. Um, I'm not exactly sure what the literacy rate is. Like how many, ki how many, how many of the kids can read Bangla, you know, their native language. Um, you know, at our, the school, the slum that we were, the slum school, uh, Vivid, uh, the, they did not really speak any English. We would do some English songs and things and they would kind of, you know. Uh, they had very basic yeah, yeah. English. Yeah. Is, is there the tensions on the border between India and Bangladesh like there is between India and Pakistan? Uh, maybe not quite to the same extent, but there are definitely some tensions. Um, we, when we went to Bangladesh, we thought, oh, you know, we're, we're going to be so close to India, it'll be really easy to just go over to India and, and you know, because we really wanted to see India. Uh, and the first year we were there, um, the tension was pretty bad, and it was really hard to go from Bangladesh into India. It was really hard to get a visa. Uh, it could take you months, so we didn't even try that that year. Um, there was, there's also, uh, you know, one of the unfortunate things for Bangladesh is that the, all the, those major rivers flow from India into Bangladesh, and India c controls dams and things that, so uh, India, India is not very, I hate to say it, I, I, they don't seem to be very understanding about the problems that they're, you know, closing the dams and opening the dams without any any warning or anything. Can can what, what problems that leads to in Bangladesh? Um, there's a great documentary film called Water Wars uh, that's all about that subject. But that's one of the one of the issues that they that they struggle with. Question down here. What was one of your funnest activities or adventures or funniest things that happened while you were there? Well, I, tell, you tell us. Okay, story. so, well, I, I think. <laughs> A little closer to the mic. Okay, um, we, um, we, we, were, we were very fortunate to take some really great trips. And last winter we took a trip to Sri Lanka. And one of our favorite stories really uh, uh, occurred there. Um, we, were, we, we rented a, a, a tree house on the edge of a national park in Sri Lanka. And, uh, you know, the, the branches kind of wo you know, wound up through the, 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 you know, the room right next to the bed that we were sleeping in and everything. So I thought it would be a good idea to hang my pants over the branch, um, you know, that night. And uh, so the next morning I, I, you know, picked up my pants and I pulled them on. And uh, we went down, went downstairs, and uh, I was sitting at breakfast, and all of a sudden, I, I felt like there was something in my pants, but, but then it stopped, and so I thought, eh, I must have just been, you know, must have just been a tickle or something. And so about, you know, 20 minutes passed, we finished our breakfast, we went out and we were talking to, to the manager of this place we were staying, and all of a sudden, I felt that tickle again, but, but then it stopped again, so I, I didn't think much of it. So then we took about a half-hour walk, and we were walking down this road that skirts the, uh, the national park, and it just happened to be like a section where it was kind of a bend and we didn't, there was no motorcycles going by or anything. And all of a sudden there was definitely something in my pants. And so I just, all I could do is pull my belt and drop my drawers right there. And I looked down and uh, running along the waistband is a, is a small mouse. And, uh, and I, I mean, and so I, I quick, I don't know why, but I spread my legs and it was like a slingshot and the mouse went sailing into the, into the bushes and we never saw it again. <laughs> but I think one of my favorite things I about the, she dying. hates mice, so she, she couldn't believe I had a mouse in there. But some, one of our friends, through her Facebook page, said, ah, oh, Jeff is the only person in the world who could have a mouse in his pants for over an hour and not know it. <laughs> <laughs> so Great her. story. Great story. <laughs> so, Jeff, obviously no trout no in trout. Bangladesh. So, no trout. any fishing experiences? Um, I, my my son-in-law, well, my son-in-law and daughter were, were in Bangladesh the second year that we were there, and he and I, he's, we both like to fish, and um, I had been tying flies without ever using any while I was there, and so uh, one day we finally got the idea to go to a, a pond that was fair, you know, fairly clean. We knew there were fish in it. We didn't know if we'd be allowed to fish, so we went to this pond, and, uh, 
you know, we went down there with our fishing rods, we kind of, or our fishing rod, we decided to share, we started to put the rod together, and of course then a couple of guards come down and start to, you know, sort of sidle up to us, you know, what, kind of, what are you doing? Give us some money. If yeah, you and so, so we fished for about 15 minutes, um, gave them 50 taka or something, and, and uh, you know, I think all the fish must have been vegetarians or something, because <laughs> we, we couldn't get them to hit anything, so. But, it, you know, we tried. That was our only experience fishing, though. Well, we're going to uh, take a break right now so that we can go in for dinner, but you will have a chance to ask more questions uh, after dinner. Uh, after we have finished our dessert, we'll turn up the lights in the dining room and finish some more questions. But let's give a wonderful round of applause to Jeff and to Anne. Can I just give a shout out to Chris here? And then... Can, I just want to thank Chris, who's up in the, up in the booth there. He's the, he was our tech guy, uh, and Vicki for, for all that they've done. So thanks to Chris and Vicki.